Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So glad you've joined us today. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Amen. He Amen. is risen indeed. I had somebody ask me, we have a tradition at church, especially on Easter, especially on Resurrection Sunday, we say he is risen, and then the congregation responds, he is risen indeed. And somebody asked me, or, or commented, uh, that, that's kind of hokey. Why do we do that, Pastor? You know, we, we always know, you know, we say the same thing. It's, it's kind of silly. And I thought about it, and I said, you know why we do it? Because it's good to proclaim that he is risen and that he's alive. Yes. Jesus is alive and he's Amen. risen. So I'm going to ask you, even if you feel silly at home watching your TV or your computer, or maybe you're on the phone right now, would you just proclaim that with us today? He is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. He is alive and yes. he is well. And I have a little friend that wanted to join me for church today, so we'll see how that goes. But um, I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to celebrate Jesus and his resurrection and, and the fact that he's alive and that we're alive today because he's alive. Amen. 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 Yes. Dearly Father, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your grace, for your goodness, and we proclaim today uh, on Easter Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday 2020, in the midst of everything that's going on, we proclaim that you are alive, that you've risen. And Lord, we thank you for that, and we celebrate that, and we give you this time. We pray that you would be lifted up, that you'd be honored and glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to share with you in the, in the word um, in John chapter 20. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they've taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings laying there. While the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and laying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciples, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed, for until then, for until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying as she wept. She stopped and looked in. She saw two bright white robed angels, one seated at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been laying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angel asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, if, if you've taken him away, tell me where you put him, and, I, and I'll go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Amen. 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 Let's sing together this morning. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, the blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse. Upon Here, the final breath he gave as heaven left away. 
Just a reminder, the tomb is open. Yes. You can walk right through it. There's no stopping you now. Because of Jesus, what he has done for you. Before our first breath on this earth, he died for us. I hope today is the day that you come back to him just to rebuild what is lost. Let's pray. Dear Father, we love you. 
We thank you for everything you have done in our life. We thank you for all the things, Father, that you place for us. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Holy Spirit. We thank you for your angels. We thank you for our church family. Yes. Father, we thank you for your love. Yes. We thank you for your grace. Yes. It's the day our Lord Heavenly Father we celebrate. Yes. But we understand, we know, is to live by day by day. Yes. We thank you so much. Speak with Pastor Charles as you deliver your message. Thank you for your anointing upon him. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Uh, uh, someone stole Pastor Sam's seat. Um, and uh, he he wanted to keep it that way. Yes. <laughs> so she said, well, we'll see. Finally. She looks all right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's been trying to get her on a video for, for a couple weeks now. She's worked her way in. Well, uh, I love I love Easter. I love Resurrection Sunday. We love you. And uh, uh, thank you, brother. Love you, too. Love, you. love you guys. Yeah. But I got to be honest with you. This is a weird one. <laughs> it's different. Uh, a lot of different stuff going on. We're all going through it. Sorry. And um, it's really made, I mean, I guess I do this every year, every Easter. I, I stop to really contemplate and think about what does Easter mean? Because I don't want it to be, you know, the cross and the resurrection, uh, what we celebrate at Easter, it should never become a cliche to us. That's right. It, it, it's, it's the most important thing that's happened in all of human history. And whether you know it or not, it's the most important thing that's ever happened in your life. It's the most important thing that's ever happened in my life. Amen. And, and it should never become a cliche. And sometimes, uh, dare I say, maybe it does. We're like, oh, yeah, the cross and the, the empty tomb and all that stuff. You know, like, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't ever want to just be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah about it. And I'll tell you what, because this year is so different, because, um, I mean, this is usually our big, our, I mean, we have lots of big weekends over the year, but Easter's a big one at church, right. and, and we usually have breakfast together. Um, we have egg hunts for the kids, and, yes. and um, we don't have all that stuff this year, obviously. And it's really caused me to stop and think about what is the significance of this day? Hmm. And what does it mean, not only 2,000 years ago, which is wonderful and powerful, but what does it mean on April... April, what's Easter? Twelve. April 12th, thank you. What does it mean on April 12th, 2020 and beyond? Mm -hmm. Because I want to tell you something. It means something today That's and right. for today. And so I want to read a passage out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12. Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he, he writes this. He says, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Yes. There is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be Pity. Well, there's an uplifting Easter Sunday verse. Paul's saying, hey, listen, if this whole resurrection thing didn't happen, if, if Jesus yes. died on the cross and he never Amen. walked out of the tomb, this is what Paul is saying. Hallelujah. He said, your faith is and your hope is useless. And he's saying, uh, 
you're bearing false witness about God because you're proclaiming he is alive and that he's risen from the dead. Um, and he's saying not only that, that, that we're to be pitied if Jesus hasn't risen from the dead because right. we've spent our life on a lie. We spent our life on something that's not real. But that's not the end of the passage. <laughs> Verse 20 says this. This is what Paul says. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. He's alive. Yes. And, and so we are not to be pitied. Our faith is not useless. We do not bear false witness because Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Right. And we have hope today. Right. We have hope in the midst of, 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 of coronavirus. We have hope in the midst of yes. uh, just a, a crazy time politically and, and worldwide. We have hope because Jesus is alive today. Amen. And, 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 and so I want us to think about, and, and I've been thinking about, not only what does the resurrection mean 2,000 years ago, but what does the resurrection mean today? What does it mean in my life today? Maybe you're there and you're saying, well, so what? Maybe Jesus is alive. What does that mean for me today? And there's three things. I think it means a whole lot of things, but there's three specific things that I want to share with you real quick today, uh, this morning from the Word. And the first one is this. It means that our sins are forgiven. Amen. If you've received Jesus Christ, yes. your sins are forgiven. Amen. I don't know a person in my life that there's not a situation or a thing somewhere in their past, maybe even right now where you wish you, uh, man, everybody, I wish I could do that over. I wish I could do a do-over on that, mm. a mistake or, or something we said or, 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 or just some, some mess that we've made. I wish we could do it over. I wish I could have a brand new start. For all of my, my failures and my problems and my hurts and my pain. And, and let me tell you something. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is, is, is about having all of those things done away with. Oh, no. Because Amen. Jesus paid the price. Not because Amen. I've earned it. Not because you've earned it. Not because any of us deserve it. But because Jesus shed his blood. His sinless, perfect blood. Because he loves me. Because he loves you. Because he loves us. So that our sins could be forgiven. See, sin separates us from God. Mm. That's not what God wants. God wants us to be with him, in relationship yes. with him. And sin separates us. So, so Jesus died for our sins. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, And you being dead in your trespasses, or you being dead in your mm. sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he is made alive together with him, having forgiven you, Forgiven you for all trespasses or sins. Amen. That not only is he alive, but if you're found in him, you're alive today. Yes. And I'm alive today. Amen. Not just yeah. not just our bodies, but our spirit and our soul that we're alive. Yes. We're alive because of Jesus. And it goes on to say that Jesus has wiped out our sins in uh, verse 14, Colossians 2 14. It says, Having canceled the charge of our legal mm -hmm. indebtedness. <laughs> which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, yeah. nailing it to the cross. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. That's what the resurrection means in 2020. Your sins are forgiven if you've received Jesus. And we're going to talk a little bit if we have it. We're going to give you an opportunity to do that. But Jesus paid the full penalty for our sins. Uh, he became the sacrifice, the blood sacrifice that was needed. Mm. Uh, to atone for the sin of the world, for your sin, for my sin. When he declared from the cross, one of the last things that he said on the cross was, it is finished. Hmm. He's speaking about the work of God, the plan of God. It was accomplished yes. that there was now a way to be forgiven of our sins. Romans 8, chapter 1 says, There is uh, therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to to the Spirit. When you're in Jesus, you live in His resurrection, and there is no condemnation because we've asked for forgiveness, and He's made a way. And He's made a way so that we can uh, 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 be where God intended us to be, which is in relationship with Him. Sin is broken relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus made a way for us to have whole relationship with God, with our Creator. 
And that leads to the second thing that the resurrection means in 2020 today. It's that not only are our sins forgiven, our lives have purpose because Jesus is alive. Amen. Mm -hmm. He gives us purpose. Amen. What was the Father's purpose for Jesus' death? John 12, 47 says, Jesus said, I do not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Yes. You see, God had a plan. And a, it wasn't random. God's plan, God's purpose was to save the world, to save you, to save me, to save Pastor Sam and Sonia, and, and, and to save you. Amen. That was his plan, and that was his purpose. Amen. Romans 5, 8. Paul says, God demonstrated his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to be uh, ready or worthy. He died for us when we were at our lowest. Romans 10, 9 says, uh, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. That's a promise that we're celebrating today. We ought to celebrate that promise every day. But yes. we're, that's the resurrection right there. That's the resurrection. It was the Father's purpose Hallelujah. to send Jesus to save you, to save me, to save us. That was his purpose. It wasn't to condemn us. It was to save us, to forgive us of our sins. And because Jesus rose from the dead, uh, our faith is not empty. It's not useless. It's It's alive. And it's vital for eternal life. Amen. John 10, 10 says, I've come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I love that because sometimes uh, when we think about forgiveness of sins and our salvation in Jesus Christ, um, I think sometimes Christians do this. Even people that have walked with the Lord for a long time. We think that somehow what that means is that, um, and it does mean this in part, but the fullness of what that means is that when I die, I get to go to heaven. That's true. I'm thankful that I know that my eternity is secure, not because of who I am, but because of who Jesus is and what right. Jesus did. And that someday, when this life ends, whether that's today or tomorrow or next week or whether that's many, many years from now, I don't know. But when that day comes, I know that it's not the end of me. That, that, that in some sense, life just begins because I'm going to yes. enter into eternity with Jesus. And I'm so thankful for that. I don't want to minimize mm -hmm. that. But I want to tell you something. God's plan and intention for us, his purpose for your life, uh, uh, is not just to, to wait around the rest of this life to die. That's right. <laughs> in fact, Paul said uh, in uh, Philippians chapter 1, he said, uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And while I'm alive, man, Jesus is with me. The, the, the Holy Spirit, he sent the Spirit. The Holy Spirit now is with. Mm -hmm. His presence is with all believers. And he's got a purpose for us right now that eternity doesn't start the day that we die. Eternity starts today. Today is the day of salvation. That he wants to give life and give it more abundantly. And that starts right now. That promise is for today. Maybe you're feeling cooped up at home and, and, and trapped. Uh, man, Jesus has purpose for you today. Mm -hmm. He's, he's not just waiting around for you to die. He doesn't want you to wait around to die. He has purpose for you. There's people to be prayed for. There's, there's praise to give him. There's things to worship him to, with, with, with the breath that's in your lungs and whatever energy you have. There, there's people that you need to encourage. And there's, there's people that need the word. And there's people that need to know Jesus, that you can share what Jesus has done for you. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. Our, our culture, our society is trying to tell us that, that life's all about uh, looking the right way or having the right things or having enough money or, or having a lot of money or, or being like this person or, or make sure you use this product and that product and you wear these clothes and that somehow gives you worth and makes your life better. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that that's, that, and, and for a lot of people, that, 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 that somehow that's, that's purpose. For a lot of people, that's how they live. They're not even really living. They're just kind of existing. And they're chasing things that won't give yeah. them any purpose. And they're living for things that, 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 that fade away. And Jesus has more than that for us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before my hand, that we should walk in them. Mm. I'm going to read that again because it's so good. And I just hope it blesses you just so much today. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand 
that we should walk in them. You are Amen. God's masterpiece. You are God's Amen. work of yes. art that he created for his purpose, Amen. which is to tell people who he is, that we uh, that he's got a plan for us, that it's unique. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 24, it says, But life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about God's mighty kindness and love. Amen. That's your Amen. purpose. That's my purpose. That's what we've been put here to do, is to, to love Jesus and be in relationship with him, with the Lord, and to love uh, each other and the world around us the way that Jesus did. You've got a plan and you've got a purpose. I think God has a plan and God's got a purpose for your life. I'm so thankful for that. Amen. Amen. And, and how does God accomplish those things? There's two ways. Well, I mean, there's a lot of ways, but the, one, through the power of Christ. Amen. I, Amen. I love, you know what the scriptures tell us? The same power that rose Jesus from the dead. That's right. Is, is available to you. It's available to me. It's, yes. If, if, if you know Jesus Christ, if you've received the Holy Spirit in his presence into your life, that same power that rose Jesus yes. from the dead, it's present in your life right now. Yes. Okay. And, and it's not you or your own strength, but it's his. And he's given that to us. Everything that Jesus had access to, you and I have access to. What a blessing. Yes. We ought to be praying and living in that power. He accomplishes his plan through his power, but also through his promises. His promises. His promises are good, and Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the age. Jesus said he would build his church. Not, not as a building, but as, as a people. Uh, Amen. There's so many promises in the Word of God. And his power and his promise. And what's wonderful about the Lord, what's wonderful about Jesus and, 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 and just the God that we serve, the King of Kings, is that not only does he have wonderful promises... He has the power and the authority and the strength to keep all yes. the promises. And he Amen. does it. And he fulfills those things. Amen. It's good. Easter, Resurrection Sunday is all about in 2020, forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. It's all about the plans and purposes that God has given mm -hmm. to you and your life and your family Amen. and to me and my life. And number Thank three, you. it means this. It means that our future is secure. Church, our future is secure. These are uncertain times. I'll be transparent with you. I'll be very honest with you right now. Um, I uh, There's some concerning things going on in the world today. And I can't sit here and tell you that I'm like, ah, you know, everything's fine. It'll be all right. I know it'll be all right. But it weighs heavy on me sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think about... Um, mm -hmm. The people that are, are, are sick, not even just with coronavirus, but with so many things. Um, people that are suffering right now. I think about just the world right now and, 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 and just experiencing this isolation that we are. Um, in a way that, that, that in my lifetime I've never experienced anything like this. I think about folks that are, are, are scared and that have already contracted this this. The, disease um, I I think about our, 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 our medical professionals and and yes. even when I go to the grocery store you know what I feel I feel so bad for for um, the, the people working with everybody I mean they've got to be concerned and and, and I, I just pray for them I, I try to be so nice to them when I gotta go to the store sure. and, and, and just thank them like you know and, and let you know what let them know I'm, pr I'm, a, I'm praying for you Amen. It's concerning. Yeah, that's right. I can't just say oh, I never think about those things. It's no big deal. It's fine. I think about it a lot. I think about um, people that are out of work right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. I think about what finances are going to look like for so many families. Maybe even our family. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know where this is all going. I'm not trying to bring the mood down on Easter Sunday. I'm trying to bring it up because you know what? I don't have any of those answers. I don't know. I haven't worked through all that. I don't know how we're going to get out of this thing. I don't know how it's going to end. But I know that our future in Jesus Christ is secure. secure. Amen. And this is not going to be yes. the end of me. And it's not going to be the end of his people. Yes. And, and, and you know what? Even, even if, 
if worse came to worse, what's the worst thing that happens for a believer, for a Christian in Jesus? Maybe it'll be the end of this body. I don't think it will be, but maybe it will be. That ain't the end of me because I was just going to go be with Jesus. That's right. And our future is secure because of the resurrection. That's right. It's secure. And there's so much peace and hope. And you know what? There's two things I do when my mind starts racing and it's late at night and I start thinking about all the craziness that's going on and all the what ifs. I, one, I start to pray. But two, I just start to dwell on the fact that, man, God's got this. God's got my life. And my future is secure because of what Jesus accomplished. I, I'm so thankful for the cross, and we should never forget the cross. In just a minute here, we're going to share communion together. So uh, if you have some juice and some crackers or bread, get that together. Um, if you don't have juice, uh, no worries. Get some water or some, uh, um, I don't know, whatever you want to use. <laughs> but, but, but we're going we're gonna to share communion together. And it's so good to remember what Jesus did on the cross. Yes. That he died, that he suffered. And he poured out his blood. And I will never, ever, ever diminish that. Amen. But I want to remind you today that that's only half the story. Amen. That that this story is a tragic one if it wasn't for the resurrection. That's right. Amen. And so the cross is so important to who we are as believers, as a people of God. But equally as important is the resurrection Amen. and the Amen. victory that Jesus has over the grave. Amen. And that the power and authority that he has in your life and in my life comes because of the resurrection. And he's forgiven Amen. you of your sins. And he's given you purpose and plan in your life. And 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 and. He has offered you a secure future. And so when your mind starts racing and you don't have all the answers and Pastor Josh doesn't have the answers and people a lot smarter than Pastor Josh and a lot more holy than Pastor Josh, they don't even have the answers. I don't got to worry because I know that, 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 that my future is secure. Mm -hmm. Even when it's uncertain in my own mind, I know where I'm going. I know that this life is not the end of me, that there's more to it. And, and, and I know that even in this yeah. life, when things are rough, that God's even got a purpose right here for what we're going through here. Thank you. And that's hard. That's hard sometimes. But I wanna, I'm want i going to have Caleb come back up. Um, uh, I'm going to have Caleb and Jacob come up. Uh, and then Sam's going to come up after they... We're going to sing a song. Um, and we're going to do communion. But, but I want to pray. I want to pray for you. Um, the Bible says that we, we read a verse today that says if, if, if we confess Jesus and we believe that he rose again, Amen. if we repent of our sins, mm -hmm. that he's faithful to save us. And so if you're listening to these things today, all of those three uh, uh, promises, the forgiveness of sins, plan and purpose for your life today and a secure future. That only happens through Jesus Christ. Something else that Jesus said is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And so Jesus made a way. In fact, Jesus didn't make a way. Jesus made the way. The, way. the only way to grab onto those promises peace and the hope and the joy that surpasses all understanding that comes to that Thank you, Jesus. is being found in Jesus Christ and asking him into your life and your heart. And we're going to do that right now. If you've never done that, uh, I want you to say this prayer with me. If you would just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, Lord, I know that I have sinned. I've made mistakes. And I've fallen short of what your will is for my life. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Every one of them. I believe that you went to the cross so that you could forgive me of my sins. So that my sins could be forgiven. And I believe that you rose again and that you are alive today in 2020. And I ask that you would be Lord of my life. 
my heart, and my mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer today for the first time, praise the Lord. You are part of the family of God, and your sins have been forgiven. You have purpose in your life, and your future secure. Amen. And you're part of the family of God. You have a great fellowship. You have brothers and sisters. If you said that today for the first time, let somebody know. Let somebody in your family tell somebody. Also, you can uh, uh, email the church. If you go on our website, TorrenceDaz.com, uh, email us. And somebody will get back to you. I'll get back to you. I'd love to talk to you. Let us know that you said that prayer, Pastor John. You can leave it in the comments section. Um, but if you said that prayer for the first time, praise the Lord. We're rejoicing with you. Um, I want to pray for, for all of us now. I want to pray for all of us. And, and, and just, I'm going to pray over just the people of God. And, and our communities, uh, whoever's listening to this, your families right now. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. And, and, and Lord, we thank you for the hope that you give us, Lord, that we have forgiven sins, that we have a purpose and a plan for our life, Lord, and that, that our future is secure in who you are, Lord. And I pray for just joy and hope and peace to overwhelm everybody watching this right now, every household that's represented from somebody watching this right now, Lord, because of who you are, because of what you've done, Lord, and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's say.
you, Lord. Praise you.
Know that today. Share that today. Live in that. Walk in it. Think in that. He's alive. He is risen. Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah, Samuel. He yes, is risen. He is yes, risen indeed. indeed. Amen. So good. Uh, friends, uh, we love you. We're praying for you. Um, if you go to our church, I would encourage you uh, to continue to worship the Lord through the giving of your tithes and offering. You can do that. Um, uh, you can mail a check into the church. Uh, I'm in the office. The girls uh, are, are in the office and whatnot. So uh, we are there. You can mail a check to the church. You can also uh, give online. TorrenceNaz.com uh, has all of our information. There's actually a giving option online there if, if that's easier for you. But we would encourage you uh, to continue to, to worship the Lord for the giving of your tithes and offerings. We thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. If you're watching this and you're not a part of our church, uh, you go to another church, I encourage you to remember your church at this time and remember worshiping the Lord at your local church uh, uh, through, the, through, through the giving of your tithes and offering. And I'm uh, just so glad you joined us today. Uh, share this video with somebody. Let somebody know that Jesus loves you. Uh, share this video with as many people as you can, actually, on social media or however, uh, Facebook, however you can get it out. Get it out. Let people know. Uh, leave a comment for us. Say hi. We love you. Uh, if you have a prayer request, you can also email that into the church, morrisnaz.com, and uh, we'll, we'll be praying for that. We're checking that, and, and uh, we are praying for many, many folks. So please, if you have anything, let us know. Uh, Check the, the, the video. We also have an Easter a kids program. Uh, Sonia's going to uh, put that video up on the, on YouTube. So, uh, kids, make sure you, you tune in for that. We've got a fun lesson and activity for you. That's going to be a lot of fun. So check out our kids' video. And we got all kinds of stuff on the YouTube channel. So, so check out all the videos. Lots of stuff there. Um, God bless you. Uh, now may the God of peace you through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Church, I love you, and I want my family. I'm going to have everybody come up, and we're just going to say hi to you, Easter greetings. Um, I guess Maggie's going to come back up too. There, come up here, buddy. There you go. Everybody get in. Get in. You don't have to keep playing. It's okay. We love you, church. Lean in, lean in. Happy Easter! From the Wickers and Mount Affairs, we love you. We'll see you soon. Praying for you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.